Okay, so 52 Pi have sent me a new Raspberry Pi 5 case, and even the box looks cool on this one. So Game 5 Pi Entertainment System. Inside we've got the system and also some basic instructions. Connectivity wise, you can see we've got the usual connections on the Pi, so HDMI and USB-C, and there must be an SD card slot here, although I don't know how I'm gonna get an SD card in and out of that. Uh, and then the front, has a flip up for the connections, which is a really nice touch. Let's have a look inside. It doesn't, oh, it does come apart. Oh, that's good, because I, I never like it when you have to take off the feet to take out screws, so that's a good touch. Not the official cooler, we've got a fan, so the Armour Light V5. We've got another fan inside, so we've got a case fan in here. Little PCIe cable and some bolts. Some more screws, and a tiny little NVMe board as well. Oh, and also this bag has got some plastic screws, some thermal heat pads, and some rubber feet for the base, and a screwdriver. So that's a cool little board. So it hasn't got any power from the GPIO pin, so everything is coming from the PCIe cable. I do prefer it when it takes it from the GPIO pins as well, but uh, I haven't had problems with these drives when you're running just one NVMe, so we'll see how it works. I've got a 2230 Raspberry Pi drive here, that fits in fine. And in here, nice to see they've given two PCIe cables. And this bit fits in here, and just a screw to go in. And that screws in through the back here, like that. So I'd say we've probably got two sets of thermal pads in here, there's loads. And they've gone to town on the thermal pads, they're covering pretty much everything. Whereas quite a few cases just cover key components. So let's pop this on, probably easy to plug this in first. And that goes up through the official fan holes on the board into the cooler. And then the other one through here. So you can see it's naturally got a bit of space here between the board and the Pi and the NVMe is kept separate. And the PCIe cable goes in here. And it's nice when they offset it because it means that you still have access to the SD card slot. Okay, that feels like it went in. And the SD card slot is nice and clear. So we've got these other two fan cables which are going to go onto the GPIO pins, but I can put this in place first of all. I can see that the power switch is lined up already. And it looks like they're recommending the 5 volt pin and the ground which would be, uh, so these two next to each other, so four and five on my diagram, but I've actually connected it to one and five, because then the fan will only be using three volts, which is quieter. So let's tuck this in a bit. Uh, it is a super easy, but really well-designed case. Okay, that's the last screw in. So this is how it all looks with that secondary fan connected to the three volt. So you can see these are fake buttons. Let's pop that on, that just clips in place then. Yeah, that's all clipped in. So the mic switch and also the SD card so that you can see it in there. Uh, I guess that's probably gonna be all right to get to, let's try it. So can I get an SD card in and out using just fingers? Oh yeah, that's in. Oh, this is going to be all right, actually, because you can get your fingernail in there to be able to pull it out. Perfect. That's really well designed. Doesn't look like that stays up, but I guess when there's cables in there, then it won't, it won't shut. Yeah, very smart. Let's get it plugged in. So pretty easy connections-wise, because obviously it's using just standard connections. Uh, so all of the ports, there's no extra boards or anything. That's how they keep the cost low, really. I think for this, just because it's so neat, I'm going to use a Bluetooth controller, so I'm going to try the Stadia controller, uh, and I'm going to use Wi-Fi as well, because it's a plastic case, it's not going to impede the Wi-Fi much. So the power button is on the back. It's not quite as bad as Apple putting it on the bottom corner on the new uh, Mac minis, but uh, it is on the back, so 
that's the button, I can feel it micro switching, so it's easy enough to find. Boot it up with an SD card in the back, and this is Raspberry Pi OS, and let's write an operating system to the NVMe drive that's inside the Game 5 Pi case. So let's call up Raspberry Pi Imager by pressing the Windows key and start typing Imager. And we'll do choose device, Raspberry Pi 5, choose OS, and if we scroll down, we've got emulation and game OS is already in here as an option. And the only one that's in there as standard is Recall Box. You can get Batacera and also RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 5, and I've got separate videos on those, but let's go with Recall Box as it's the easiest option. Choose Storage. This is my NVMe drive that I installed earlier. Hit Next, and yes. Pop your password in, and come back when that's all done. Okay, so that's all done. It's just asking for my password once more. So now we can close down Raspberry Pi Imager, and we'll shut down, and eject the SD card. Yeah, that is easy to get in and out. And we'll press the button to switch it on again. I have found that with my cables, you do need to give them a bit of a push into the adapter. So the plastic's kind of making it not sit in quite right with this particular cable and this one. I don't really have any others to try. There you go. So Recall Box is starting up for the first time. So I've got a controller flashing here. And I think if I press uh, the Stadia button and Y, obviously different buttons on different controllers for starting up a Bluetooth controller. So press enter, controller settings, and then is it A? Yeah, uh, pair Bluetooth controller, so A. Bluetooth pairing will start and run for several minutes. Ah, after a few attempts, it's now shown up. So let's select the Bluetooth Stadia controller. Trusted, connected, yes, and close. Okay, so is it work? Yeah, it's working now, right, perfect. All the start and select buttons seem to work. Okay, so it's later in the day and you can see it says Stadia has been plugged in. I just turned on my controller and it's picked it up already. So let's go to sound settings and pair a Bluetooth audio device. I'll just turn on my Bose speaker. Crikey, loads of things come up. Uh, there's the speaker. Connected to ASUS. And I do this because I screen capture and my monitor also has no sound, so it's really handy to be able to put it through a Bluetooth speaker. Although I'm not sure if the music is copyrighted, so let's turn that down. So a lot of older systems on here, I think 1990 is about as new as they get. So things like, yeah, Game Gear is 1990. Actually, Game Boy Advance has got to be more recent. Yeah, 2001 for Game Boy Advance, so that must be the most recent on there, I would think. Uh, and there's lots of homebrew games. So, that, well, this is arcade, but they would have been remakes by individuals, so, you know, not commercial releases. But some of them are really playable and quite enjoyable. So Neo Geo's on here, and we've got Snares as well. So let's shut it down and put a few more games on it. So I've still got this SD card which has got Raspberry Pi OS on it. So let's pop that in the back here. Make sure that's pushed in and started up. And the Pi by default will boot from the SD card unless you've changed the order. So can we see the NVMe drive? Yeah, so here's the drive. So you can see it says Recall Box. So if we open that up and we need to put in our password. So it's actually the share one that we want, not the uh, recall box one. Uh, and then we've got BIOS and also ROMs. So some systems you don't need to put a BIOS in, some you do. But you'll see that all the systems that are in there have got the required folders. So things like Dreamcast would need ROMs. Uh, but I'm going to just do some ROMs here. And let's just see, is... Yeah, GameCube's not on here. It is on uh, an X64 system, so like a PC, but it's not on this version. So what other systems have we got? So we probably haven't got Wii either. No, we haven't got Wii or PS2. We've got PSP, which is ordinary PlayStation. So let's get some PSP first of all. So 
I've got some ROMs on my NAS drive. So if I go to my network, WD My Cloud, and just log into that, and I've got a games folder. But you could be doing this on the left hand side, could be just another USB stick, and you're dragging it onto your drive that's got Recall Box games. So ROMs. And let's go PSP because it looks impressive. And we'll go with a bit of GTA. So let's copy that and paste. And while it's doing that, let's go back and let's just grab a SNES ROM. I just plugged in my Ethernet cable because it's much quicker like that. And the SNES ROM, let's go with Uniracers, uh, which I've just seen is one of the top rated racing games, which I don't even know. Uh, what it's like, so let's give that a try. So I need to go back on here to the SNES folder, SNES, and let's paste that in. So we've got two games, or maybe three. Let's close that down. And I can take out the SD card and then just boot it from the NVMe drive. Okay, so let's try PSP because that's going to be the most impressive looking of all of these. So GTA Liberty City Stories. Okay, and that's working. Oh, it's just a bit jerky. PSP is usually way better than this. I might need to do some tweaking to it, but it's showing that it's working. Let's try the SNES game as well. So if I start select and home button, and now if I press back, I can find SNES. Now, initially the Uniracers didn't show up and I had to change the name of them from Uniracer.1 and Uniracer.2 to Uniracer.smc and also Uniracer2.smc. I'm not sure if they're two different games, but uh, let's try Uniracer2 and see if that says it is Uniracer2. Okay, so nothing but black screen. Let's quit out of that and try Uniracer1. Well, hey. We've definitely got a graphical glitch here. Oh, what a shame. Well, that was a success. I wonder if I can launch it with something else. So if I go to options, advanced settings, advanced emulator configuration. So SNES, Super Nintendo. So what have we got any more options we can use? Oh yeah, we've got a few more here. Oh, loads of them. So SNES 9X was what it started at. Yeah, let's go with 2005. Okay, so that's exactly the same. I've turned off game smoothing. I've tried the Mednafen one as well, and they're all showing it like this. Could be the ROM. And I've just booted up with RetroPie to show some more impressive emulation. So this has got PS2, and also uh, it's got Wii on it as well. This is the supreme version of RetroPie. So let's try a bit of GameCube and a bit of Smuggler's Run. So, as you can see, much better, lovely and smooth on GameCube emulation. And let's try a bit of PS2. And we'll do a bit of downhill domination. And I've got loads of videos on emulation on Raspberry Pi 5. I'll link them in the description, but uh, PS2, GameCube, Wii, Dreamcast, all sorts of systems. And whether that's standalone or a multi-game emulator system like this, so nice and smooth, sound is perfect. Yeah, as you can see, no worries with that at all. Nearly a 360. <laughs> so I'm actually super impressed with it. It's nice and neat, especially using a Bluetooth speaker and a Bluetooth controller. Uh, the SD card access is probably one of the best I've had on a Pi case. Really easy to access and sensible because it's a bit further up. It's usually quite awkward on the back of the Pi. But all the ports are accessible as well. The only slight thing is my cable does sometimes need a push. So I can start it up and I get no display and I just need to give it a little push into the side. And that's because the plastic probably sticks out that little bit too much over the connections. That might just be my case or it might be these cables that I get. So maybe other cables wouldn't have that problem. But it is a really nicely designed case, really sensibly priced as well, especially as it comes with an NVMe. So thanks very much to 52Pi for sending me this to test. I really like it. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.